Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome to the hosted monitoring demo. So this is part of a CDX offering that we uh, uh, recently released as GA. And as you know, in CDX, we generally tend to run probes from end users' devices, where I'm running a web probe and a uh, cloud path probe, typically a trace route from a user's device to a destination. And that allows me to identify how the performance of my network is, or how are my applications working? And we also collect health telemetry on the devices, which tells us a lot of information about how the device itself is uh, performing. Now, last week we released hosted monitoring. And what hosted monitoring allows me to do is set up the same web probe and cloud pack probe from our 150 data centers that we have across the globe to run these probe 24 bar seven. So let's take an example over here. So I have a bunch of probes that I've set up. So I'm monitoring uh, some of my SaaS applications for SLA purposes. Uh, I am very interested in DNS. It's very close to me. So I typically end up monitoring uh, the two DNS providers that we generally end up using, Google DNS and Cloudflare DNS. Uh, and then there are a bunch of uh, API endpoints that I'm monitoring for my internal purposes. But let's take a look at uh, the Google DNS performance, right? So here I have set up my Google DNS to run from six locations, uh, three in the US and three in India. Uh, this is where <clears throat> mainly my customers are or my users are. So I want to see how the performance for uh, Google DNS is in these areas. And right off the bat, I can see a 30 day preview of how the performance has been so far. Uh, I select the 24 hour window by default. I can move it around and I can go around and see uh, any uh, snapshot that I want to see. So let's see this snapshot where this spike happened. So you can see that there was a spike that happened in my San Jose data center. Now, most of it, everything seems to be really, really low, except for the spike that happened, which was really high at 173. I can also switch to <clears throat> a scatter chart. Now, scatter chart is really useful because it allows me to look at every individual run. And typically I'm looking for patterns. And over here, uh, I think because this is dwarfing my uh, uh, my data, but I can see that almost everything was in the same time frame of one or two milliseconds. So that's a good thing. I can quickly identify the anomalies that have happened over here. So let's do uh, something over here where there's a lot more flatter data that I can see. And that's where I can now see that, okay, I'm running the same cloud path probe to Google DNS from different locations. I can see my Chicago uh, performing really well, almost a second. Uh, my Frankfurt is also almost a second. Sometimes it's less, sometimes it's more. But my Zurich and San Jose data center is almost at two and three seconds, uh, three milliseconds. So again, scatter plot, it's not scary. It just basically allows you to see patterns much more easily. Now, I can also select a particular point that had a higher uh, latency over here, and I can view the details. Now, this brings us to something that we call the waterfall model, where I can see the data, again, 24 hours are selected by default, and now I can see how my Chicago data center was performing in the last 24 hours. Again, nothing major. Everything looks very much uh, uh, good. It's almost always the same uh, latency, except for this one five to 10 minute window where I had a bunch of high latencies happening. And that's where I can see, okay, that was something that was going on over here. Now, whether it was with Google DNS or not, I am not sure. I can even check over here and see, okay, my latency is generally was happening almost always towards the end where my Google uh, DNS server is. So let's see and pick another location in Washington, DC. And I can see, well, DC has al almost always been performing either one millisecond or two milliseconds. So nothing that I can see over here. Uh, we can also go and check uh, in San Jose if I had something happening in that time frame. And it was, it most likely looks like it was very specific to uh, the Chicago region. Now I can go back and do the same analysis for my Google uh, Cloudflare DNS. So here I can see Cloudflare DNS almost always uh, consistent, but there are uh, some issues happening over here with Chicago data center and I think Washington DC at the end over here. <clears throat> so it looks like the performance was a little bit erratic. 
uh, uh, in Chicago, I can always go in and see what was going on. And it looks like even Cloudflare had the same problem during the same hour as my Google DNS. So most likely what we are looking at over here is the problem probably might be happening for my Chicago residents. So it is possible that almost all your users in different parts of the country were not having a problem, but Chicago probably was looking at some issues where there was a brief period of latency that was experienced during from this particular data center. So that way I can identify these issues. I can set up alerts that can alert me every time latency goes up for continuous three or four times so that I can go and take a look as to what's happening. Now, the problem over here is probably not happening towards uh, our Zscaler data center, but it's probably happening towards Cloudflare. So this tells me that I can always reach out to Cloudflare and ask them like, hey, something is off in your Chicago area. Can you please help me identify what the problem is and get back to me, right? Now, <clears throat> going back, uh, we have something very similar for our web probes as well, right? So web probe is basically, you can set up a web probe, run every five minutes to a certain destination. In this case, I'm running it to the uh, Salesforce front door and uh, it's running from the same six locations. Now I see two charts over here. So one is my page fetch time. It tells me how it has been performing and you can see there are spikes, almost regular intervals uh, uh, at the beginning and at the end over here, but it was pretty stable in the middle over here. And the green line tells me what my SLAs are for that period of time. So uh, the SLA summaries are also provided. So it tells me month to date SLA, what was my SLA in the past 30 days and what is the SLA for this selected window right here. Same rules apply. Uh, I can switch from line chart to scatter chart if I want to. I can add more metrics as well. So I can look at my data along with DNS now and switch to scatter chart really quickly. And I can see that DNS has been almost always uh, not that bad, but it's about 10 to 12 milliseconds almost always. Uh, I can dive into a particular data point as well uh, and basically see my waterfall data as to how all of this has been performing. Give me a complete waterfall so you can see my redirect has happened with a response code, what protocol was used. I can see my 200 OK and where most of the time was spent. Now, a server responding in 145 milliseconds, it's pretty decent. What you almost always want to check is this particular information. So DNS, TCP handshake and SSL handshake is as little as possible because that's what amplifies uh, your uh, the, the slowness in your performance. Uh, let's switch to uh, another data center and see how the data has been performing from there. So this is my San Jose data center. And again, the performance seems to be pretty static uh, throughout. There are a few uh, spikes up over here, uh, but nothing alarming. This is probably common. It probably was a one-off time. And I can see over here that my TCP handshake took a longer time than expected. And that's probably what elongated my uh, server response time and everything. But this was happening on one of the uh, redirects. So it, it looks like everything seems to be good for now. Now, coming back to my configurations, I talked about setting up alerts, right? Now, the approach that we have taken for setting up alerts in uh, hosted monitoring is slightly different from ZDX. In ZDX, you set up an alert uh, almost like a one is to one. So you set up one alert for one uh, uh, probe. Here, I can basically assign multiple alerts to a single probe. So here you can see I have set up different kind of alerts like uh, on my page fetch time, I have a critical alert as well as a warning alert. So I can be warned saying, hey, this has happened twice in the last one hour just FYI, but if it happens continuously, then it will just alert me immediately. So it is more of a critical alert that comes in. So you can define all of these alerts that you may have and then just assign these alerts to your probes. And there's no limit as per how many alerts that you can set up for uh, these probes at the moment. And that's what I have for hosted monitoring. Uh, I'll be more than happy to answer any of your questions. Please leave them in the comments below. Thank you.